Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial and today we are going to create candles inside of 3D Studio Max and we're going to use iRay uh, to get this kind of look that you see in front of you here. Uh, so what we're going to work on is I'm going to show you a very quick uh, video of how the uh, candles were made but mostly we're going to be focusing on rendering and material creation and how we're going to get this kind of look that you see in front of you. So um, we're going to also go through uh, the scene creation as well and how we get the lights in there and uh, the warmth and the stones uh, or the little pebbles that you see and the plate and everything. We're going to go through all of that. So uh, let's get to it and um, we'll uh, start by uh, showing you the modeling of the uh, candle and before you know it you'll be creating your own uh, candle scene just like you see here. Okay guys, let's get to it. All right, so we're just going to speed this video up and we're going to start off with showing you the modeling process of creating the candle. I used a cylinder with an uh, edible poly, right? I converted it and now we're just going to add some edges to the top surface here. And I'm going to then chamfer the top here and just kind of, I just want to make sure that I get some polys here. I don't want any uh, end gons or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of uh, create my own little cuts here. Okay, grab the edges, chamfer them. Same with the uh, bottom one here. We'll um, select our center uh, edges here and then just bring out a couple of extra strands. And then we can uh, add a turbo smooth and now bring this guy into um, Sculptress. Okay, and this will help us um, with some of the details of the candle. More or less of making it look a little bit, um, it's not warped, but um, like it was used or it's been uh, it's been uh, melting, like the, uh, the flame has melted it a bit, and just give it more of a uh, kind of a bigger, thick candle look here. Let's just uh, use the um, some of the clever tools they got here. We got the pinch tool. We can tighten up the edges here a bit, and we're gonna just use some uh, of the uh, drawing um, tool here, and just kind of bring the top surfaces up a little bit. Just give it a little bit of a ridge, and then an indent in the middle. I'm gonna change the material. And we're just going to show you this process of modeling um, very fast here of how the candle is done. Uh, it's not really about the modeling of the candle, but more or less if it's going to be the rendering uh, in iRay. But uh, this this will give you an idea of how I built these uh, candles. So hopefully you can follow through with that and uh, create your own uh, unique candle uh, by uh, using these uh, the software and also uh, some of the techniques. Okay, so we're just kind of going through and we're flattening and I'm just kind of playing around and really I'm just doing this uh, very uh, freely. Okay, so I'm just kind of moving around and just trying to get a cool look here. So I bring it back into uh, 3D Studio Max by exporting it as an OBJ from uh, Sculptress and then importing it back in and making sure that um, you have your smooth groups and everything on and you'll get a quite accurate model from Sculptress to Max. Okay, we're going to bring uh, out the wick and we'll just start that with a cylinder. Do some scaling on the top. We're going to add some extra uh, edges to the uh, center of our wick. And then do some extrusions and some beveling. And I can use the uh, Turbo Smooth just to get ourselves some uh, uh, better look here with the, uh, the wick. So there we go. So we'll just kind of scale this guy up. And um, you can see now the process is just so I'm very, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm pretty much doing it very freely and just kind of looking at a reference image of a candle and just kind of trying to mock up something that looks very close to the, uh, the actual referenced um, real life uh, image of uh, a candle. All right, so we're going to make a profile here really quick. We're going to start off with uh, creating the plate. Well, creating our edges for the plate. And now we can uh, use a lathe modifier. Okay, and then we're just going to do some adjustments here. And drag it down. Try to get it placed somewhere in the scene here. And we'll bring our candle down. And then we'll just kind of move these guys around. Okay, now everything is not going to be sped up. Uh, the uh, rendering process is not going to be sped up as much as this. But this just goes and gives you an idea of uh, 
how everything was modeled. All right, so we're just gonna do some rotations because I did copy a bunch of candles. Uh, so I don't want them to look the same, so we're gonna rotate them a bit. And then um, we're gonna come around here and just get a geosphere. Okay, or Hydra. Okay, or and then we're just gonna label this a rock. Okay, and just now we can use a create this as an edible mesh, and we're gonna just kind of make references of this. Okay, and I also used a uh, I optimize. Let's optimize this guy a little bit just to make it a little bit lower poly uh, because there's gonna be a lot of them, and we're gonna use our object paint tool, and then we can um, you can also use um, physics uh, and and do it that way if you like. I'm just gonna paint these guys on for the sake of this tutorial, but you can pretty much drop, physically drop, um, use a bunch of rigid body uh, of the rock and just drop it in into the plate. So that's another good way of doing it. So right now I'm just going to place these guys. I don't really like the size, so I can bring down the, uh, the scaling a bit. All right, we can do, um, say, about 50. 50 uh, 60 to, to 80 so we get some a little bit of scale difference here um, and then I'm just gonna bring these guys around just see how they kind of lay out and they look not too too bad all right so let's use the paint tool and just paint around and um, what I can do now is just uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole video doing this so I'm just gonna speed this up by uh, going through the next uh, clip here but uh, you can get the you get the point of what I'm doing here. You can change also the offset, and then you can lay these guys out, um, and then uh, and then later if you want you can also select all these rocks as one and then optimize them once again. So just so you can get it a little bit more lower of poly if you will if you need to, depending on the size of your uh, scene. Okay, so let's just lay these guys back out. And uh, keep going here. Let's go spacing. Let's change that a little bit. Okay, we have. Um, we can do that by eight and so or so. Let's see. We move this around. Just gonna keep placing these guys down. Okay, you can see they're overlapping a little bit. That's okay. That's not a bad thing. I can also randomize some of this. All right, that's, that's not looking too, too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this video. Um, we're going to get a final look of the rocks laid out in the plate. Um, yeah, if you move, you move quite quickly if you want to do it uh, manually. If not, again, use the, uh, the uh, rigid body. But here's what we have after I just kind of laid them out. You know, spend about an extra, I don't know, let's say 10 more minutes just to kind of lay them out and get something like this. So it looks pretty cool, and uh, I think this is going to work quite nice. All right. So everything's looking pretty good. We're going to build a room. So what we're going to do is I'm going to scale the, um, the plate down quite a bit. All right, roughly around here. So we get a uh, somewhat of a uh, real world scale. Um, and then we're gonna create a box. And then that's gonna be our, our room. So we can just cast some light into this um, hollow uh, space. So if we do a uh, box, then we do another box inside here and we're gonna create a table that we can lay the plate on. That should be good. So let's say room. Okay, we'll just move up our uh, table here. Okay, I'm just going to center this quite uh, pretty close to. Uh, center of the plate here and we're just going to move this guy up. Okay, 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I don't want it to be such a big room. Uh, I just want a small space that we can uh, cast some light in. Uh, this way it's going to help with the reflections and um, get a nice light balance in here. So we're going to use the inset tool and we're going to drag and scale and just try to get our first kind of little window in here. Okay, we're not going to be seeing this in camera, so I'm not really focusing on details of this um, of this window. I just want some light to come through and some reflection from the HDR that we're going to apply to uh, our environment map. So also on this side of the uh, of the wall, we can also create a window as well. So let's just grab these points and um, lift them up. Let's delete that out, and you can see we got a like a nice styled room that we can use for two lights. Uh, well, two windows that will cast light and then we're going to add some additional lighting. So let's throw in the camera and let's get a nice position. I'm going to go with a 50 millimeter lens. Get something that looks slightly slick like this here. Just kind of showing off the candles. A little bit off camera a bit. You know, we, want, we don't want to center the, the, uh, the candles, but we're going to keep it to the left side. All right. Okay, so in the scene here, we're going to show you the light setup uh, that I have applied to the uh, candle scene. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. What we're going to do here is we're going to start off with showing you that I've used an environment of lighting, which I used, um, or an environment map, uh, which is the H an HDR that I use. Uh, if you're going to use any type of HDR, interior HDR. Um, I'm using this kitchen, nice kitchen one that has some nice colors. You can see we we have some nice light coming through so it really helps kind of uh, cast some light um, uh, through through the, uh, the the windows of our scene um, and then what I have here is I've added um, two uh, photometric lights uh, one that we have on the side where the longer window is here or where our um, more or less of a uh, vertical light or vertical window, uh, we have a light that's just kind of casting through this nice blue. That's what's hitting the uh, this side of the candles. Uh, we have this filter color here, which we're using a 189 uh, by 254 by 246 in the RGB, and you'll get this kind of nice, nice blue cast. I mean, you can use whatever kind of filter color you like. This is just one I choose. I thought it was um, quite nice for uh, having a nice blue tint that comes on the one side of uh, the candles. And then you have your shadow, uh, make sure those uh, the shadow maps turned on. And pretty much um, I have a 15 centimeter by 18 centimeter um, square or rectangle. Okay, so you gotta make sure, because usually when uh, you bring them in, they come in point. So you just wanna make sure it's that rectangular or rectangle and um, you'll be successful with <laughs> that. Okay, getting that look. So, if you don't know about uh, photometric lights. Uh, on the other side, we have another photometric light that uh, is the same size, but this time we have the filter color uh, set to like more of a less of an orange. Okay, uh, 255 by 214, uh, 143 on blue. Okay, and that'll give you this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, warmer color. Okay, we're gonna turn them off for now. I'm not gonna turn them on. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with the environment lighting. Uh, right now we haven't applied any materials to our scene or plate um, and we're going to get into that shortly but uh, I just want to show you the light balance in the scene so far of what we have so if I go to our render setup tab and uh, we bring in um, our active shade mode here which I've already got set up I'm going to go with an 800 by 450 and that will give me a nice preview so let's hit render and let this guy go um, and see what we get okay so everything's going to be grayscale at this point but we just want to see what our lights are doing here. Takes just a moment to load. So right now, um, as you can see, we just have the HDR lighting the room. All right, so we don't have a lot of uh, light coming through. Uh, we can also adjust the the uh, the output setting. Um, to this map if we would like to get some more light to cast through so um, If I want I can actually go here. Let's just I'm not going to do this in real time here, but uh, Say we want to go 1.8 uh, And we hit render You might get more of a uh, some more light casting through in the room But uh, I'm pretty much going to leave a lot of this to to the light um, 
that are in the scene that we've set up from the uh, photometric. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, a little brighter, but this is good. I can go with a 1.8. I'm happy with that. So we get some nice light casting already coming through, as you can see, um, coming from this side of the window, and then we have some some more uh, from the back side as well. So that's just going to give us a little bit more environment feel. It's going to it's going to work nice with the shadows and just kind of closing in. Uh, like it's actually in a, in a room because um, nothing else is going to be seen in the camera so we're going to get it lucky with that we're going to have um, it sitting on a table and it's all going to be out of focus we're going to use some uh, depth of field to get the uh, to get the final look okay so once we have that uh, we're going to set up our light so when I start to turn on I'm going to turn on the uh, the side light here the left I'm going to call it the left side Okay, of the camera, we're gonna just turn this light on, and now I'm gonna show you what that's gonna look like. All right, so let me just um, make sure my hardware here, everything's working pretty good. Okay, that's that's fine. We'll use the one GPU. Uh, we have render. All right, just bear with me here. So with our left side light. You're going to see a nice cast of blue, and that's just going to give us a really nice feel here. Um, and you can already feel like almost like there's a, there's a window over there or something. Um, and then when we start darkening uh, our walls and our material, everything's going to come together. It's going to almost look like it's in a you know maybe at nighttime or just at, at, at a uh, dusk kind of light setting. So we have that uh, that a light applied. Let's go to the next and let's put in our warm light. Okay. You're going to see a nice difference here. So we're just going to grab our right side uh, light, and we're just going to come down here to light properties. We're going to turn that on. All right, and let's hit render. A little waiting game, but it's all worth it. It's going to look quite nice as the light balance will, should all come together. Okay, we also, um, I didn't uh, uh, tell you here, is that we have our... Um, we have our light set up at 6%. We went to... Uh, the CD intensity, uh, and we we put that to six percent. Okay, so as we see here, we got a nice warmth. We got the we got the uh, the warm light coming in, and we got the the cool, cooler light. So that's going to give us some, you know, maybe there's a, a sun or something over in this side, of, and um, and then we got the blue cast from like a window maybe over there. So it just gives you kind of both combinations there. It makes it look quite nice. and gives you a nice balance between the HDR and then having the room uh, surrounding the, the candles. It just gives you like that indoor feel. So I like this setup here. I might just, uh, I feel that the HDR might be a little bright because I'm going to rely on those uh, photometric lights to do most of my lighting. So we're going to tone that back down and then, uh, or you can keep it like this, but uh, for, m for my sake, I'm just going to, I'm going to turn it back down and then um, we'll continue, but uh, we'll do that in, uh, in the next video. Uh, and so let's go to uh, creating the uh, candle and let's just start uh, getting the material. All right, so we're going to start now uh, to create the materials for our candle. Um, and uh, we're going to start off with uh, bringing in our material editor. We'll select a open slot here and we'll come down to iRay uh, material. And we'll drag it onto our candle, okay? So once we have that, um, we will rename this to uh, Wax. And then we're going to come down to our, we're going to take a look at our properties here. And we're just going to take off our uh, reflective coating. So we can do that by just coming down to this tab and checking that off. We can also come to the diffuse <coughs> where our base layer is. And we're going to need to change that more or less to a pale orangish color. Something like that, a little bit warmish. Okay, and then from there, um, work our way down to, uh, let's see, with backscattering, we don't really need that. We can go to our refraction, we'll turn that on so we can get some uh, refractive material. And then what we're going to have to do is pretty much rely on the volume um, tab here. And this is what's going to create our subsurface and uh, our scattering effect and um, showing our uh, wax kind of uh, look that we want here. So we're going to bring the amount up to 1 in the subsurface scattering uh, tab on the amount section. Um, 
and then we're just going to take a look around here and see if it's working so far we don't really see too much until we start to change our distance of uh, measurements and now you can start to see we get that kind of blue color that we have selected in the um, absorption um, section so we'll change our distance to about point uh, negative 0 0.95 uh, and then we're going to just change our um, our transmitted color to like a kind of a more of a less of an orange color here in the absorption absorption uh, tab here okay we changed our uh, direction to one or so um, we're not seeing too much of a change but I'm just gonna go back to uh, my negative uh, 0.95 and we get a little bit of glow coming through the back side there and that's that's kind of what we want all right so in order for us to see a better effect here what we're gonna do so we're going to come up to the top uh, viewport here. We're going to bring in a um, free light. We'll just uh, place it towards kind of the center of the uh, of the candle. And what kind of lost it there? I got to bring this thing back in. Zoom in. There we go to this guy here. And we're going to go into the properties. We're going to make sure our shadows are on. We're going to come over to our uh, intensity. And we need to really bring that down because it's going to be uh, ultra bright. Uh, but before we do that, we'll change our filter color, make that to like an orange, and then come over to our intensity and put that to about a point, um, zero point uh, a weight or so, and come down to our sphere, well, our, uh, um, our emit or shape. We're going to do that as a sphere and then radius about 0.26. So that gives us a nice range of light coming through and if you look here in the uh, in the active shade you can see that we are getting some light coming through and it's really nice because that's where kind of the the um, the flames going to be and we also want that area to be lit but it's a little bit bright for right now for our needs so we're gonna have to play with this a bit um, but you can see it's coming through quite nicely all right so we're, what we're gonna do is um, we need to kind of move this light I think a little bit and we also need to if I just re-render re this, I just want to make sure that uh, our rendering settings are coming through properly with the uh, the light properties. And it seems like it is, so we're going to just change. Um, let's bring this up a little bit to see. Uh, it's going to do some tweaks with the uh, transmitted color. Maybe what we'll do. Let's see. I'll grab this light. Okay, let's try to selected here okay it's on uniform spherical that's good um, maybe bring down the intensity a bit Let's try point point one point zero one that is and then um, let's just try to re-render this guy again it's gonna try to get it a good angle here and that's a little bit too dull um, so we're going to have to play with this a little bit more here. Let's just see. If we come back, let's change this back to, let's see, go back to uh, 0.8 or so. Okay. Or 0 0.08, I keep, uh, let's see what we get here. Okay, we're just going to bring it back up and we might just need to play with a little bit of the material property. Now if I bring this light down, actually we're seeing a nice, oops, we're seeing a nice difference here. Let's go back up, hit render again. Okay, we're seeing a quite a better effect. Maybe if I come over to our wax properties, let's go over to our base and let's change our refraction. Um, all right, let's bring our roughness. Let's play with that a little bit of our refraction roughness here to 0.8. Um, we can see it start to spread out a little bit more because if we're bringing it up. If we bring it down. Let's say we bring it all the way down to like around in the fours. I'm just trying to see this in real time what it's doing. You can see by bringing it up, we're starting to it's starting to get a little bit more. Uh, we can see through the uh, the candle. So we kind of want to stay. Let's see, I'm just going to bring the color up a bit too, a little bit more, so we get some contrast. But 
I kind of want to bring this thing back down. Let's see, a roughness could go down. I want to bring it back up. So I was just trying to get a, a nice kind of diffused look with the light. Okay. I don't actually want to play with that roughness. Let's just go... I'm going to be just trying this myself to see what kind of uh, effect is going to work. If I go to 0 0.03, okay, we're going to get a little bit more dimmer of a light. Let's just let these guys load up. Hit render again. So it's really just kind of playing. Now, that looks, now that's starting to look really good. So between the roughness of the material, of the refraction, and then um, going to look at the uh, the color of our, or sorry, a color, our intensity of the light, um, really kind of uh, determine how that's going to be nicely diffused in your candle. So what we're going to do is come back up to our, reflect, or our reflective uh, coating. We're going to change our IOR to um, a rough around 254 we're gonna bring our roughness up just so we can get a little bit of hint of uh, uh, of glossiness to our, our material as a coating and you can see that starts to look really nice because when we start to uh, put this in the scene we're gonna see some uh, nice look to the HDR and that's gonna really help sell the uh, realism um, well also what we might need to do is um, is change is actually get ourselves a, uh, a bump map so we just want to uh, come over here to our bump map. Uh, let's go to a noise. And uh, we're going to bring ourselves up to a noise type of fractal. And we're going to come in to our size. And we're going to change that to about a 0 0.1. 0 0.01. Let's try that. Let's see if we get something quite nice. And maybe even bring down the bump map um, value of our height. So we're just making sure that we're not... We don't want to see too much but we want to just see if we can get enough going on there. So I will do a region render. We can see a little bit of noise. We just want to break it up quite a bit. Okay, that might be a little too much. We start to lose our, reflect, our, our reflective um, coating on the top, so we're going to uh, bring up our IOR, and we can maybe just bring down or bring up our um, either we're gonna let's see let's play with this a little bit more okay we can bring this guy to about 0 0.08 and now we're starting to see something here this is actually quite nice so let's just see what this effect looks like and um, I'm very happy with these results I think this is looking really good you see a really nice glow around the candle so it looks just feels you get this nice warm feeling um, when you're looking at this candle and um, I believe this is going to work for us. I love the subsurface scattering and what how it's working. Uh, maybe I'll change a little bit. Let's just see if I can play the, the uh, reflective coating a little bit more just to, to see if we can get um, this to look a little bit less uh, glossy. Okay, and that I'm pretty happy with these results. And now we're going to add a new material. We're going to bring in the wick uh, material just to kind of top this off and finish the uh, candle material for this tutorial. Okay, we're gonna shut. Yeah, we're gonna check off the uh, the reflective coating. Okay, we're gonna come over to our glossiness. We're gonna bring that up. Okay, we're gonna hit OK to um, to that kind of uh, that tone of black. Okay, we don't want to. 100% black on the glossy. We just want a little bit of gray, and I think we're gonna get uh, into a better position here. And I think that's gonna look quite nice. Okay, so I'm quite happy with these results. I think this is gonna do for uh, what we need our candles to uh, look like in our scene. So we can start going ahead with putting in the flame and getting that going as well. So um, there it is. I paused the video and resumed it, and now you can see we got a really nice uh, wax. Uh, subsurface scattered material here. So let's get on with the next and start creating the flame. All right, so we're gonna bring in the uh, flame geometry here. It's uh, nothing too hard to create. It's just a cylinder. And we just kind of uh, scaled some of the uh, edges out and then tapered some in at the, the top of the, uh, of the flame. So nothing really too uh, difficult there. 
So once we're bringing in, we're just going to try to uh, adjust this to the size, and we're just going to get a, uh, a nice look here by creating an eye raven material. I'll drag it in, and it's just going to come into the top of section here. Just need to make a couple cuts just to kind of not leave this bare, so I'm just going to want to add a few uh, edges here. All right. Not really too worried about that top. I'm just going to select these uh, edges and connect All right and then we're just going to add a turbo smooth okay and that doesn't seem to be working as nice it's not as smooth so you know I'm, what I'm going to do here it's because I just maybe in my uh, import to options here I can just use a mesh smooth alright we'll just use that that's fine okay, it's a little more cleaned up so let's drag this in and we're going to hit render so as you can see, uh, right now we just have that base gray, but uh, we're going to get this thing looking quite realistic as possible. All right, so let's just uh, get a good uh, look at this flame. And I'll just drag it here on the right side so we can get a good look. It's going to set up a new material. Or actually, no, no, it's going to grab the material that we have. And I'm going to disable the uh, metallic, or not the reflective coating. Um, and we're going to add some refraction. And we're going to come over to our roughness. Put that to one for now. Okay, our glossy, we're just going to leave this as is for now. In fact, what I can do is um, take down the weight of the diffuse. Actually, hmm. I don't really want to attack this. Okay, let's bring that back up to one. Let's go to our color. And what we're going to need to do is add a gradient ramp. Okay, that will help us uh, get our uh, fall off towards our opacity of the candle. Okay, um, but I'll use it in a diffuse slot so that I can actually see how the gradient is going to work. So we'll do a UVW map. We'll come over to fit and. Um, we're going to select the uh, whole entire candle here, and we're going to fit it to uh, top from bottom here. And then we're just going to change our angle to 90 degrees, or I might go to negative 90, and then that way you can see where uh, we're going to have, we're just creating an opacity map that's going to act as our flame, because at the bottom of the, uh, where the base is of the wick, it's uh, pretty much see-through, and where it goes to the tip of the candle or the flame you're gonna get the uh, the flame itself the flame material so we're just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a blue tip of the for the moment here just to kinda see what we can come up with here so let's just render it out and you can see that we got the color in there and everything is working properly so if I was to copy this right now come down the emissions we're gonna enable it and we can now see we got some glow we got the fil filter color, and we can import, um, or sorry, um, copy and paste the uh, material into that. And I can see we've got a nice color here. I'm not too uh, fond of the blue, so let's change that. Let's just kind of bring this up to a little bit more of a yellow, pale yellow. Okay, so that should change. Uh, sometimes it's right now I have to refresh some of the eye ray uh, uh, active shade window to get it to um, to respond. Um, so maybe it's just me not being so patient, but um, I don't see a change happening at the moment. So if I just copy our gradient ramp to our cutout uh, opacity in the geometry uh, tab, okay, let's just bring that in now. Oh, there we go. So you, know, you can see everything's kind of updated, but we still need to uh, work on our opacity map. So let's just render this back out. And you can see it actually it is uh, it is coming through okay so we can um, make some adjustments here so let's go into this here and let's make this a black and white okay we don't want to use the color for the opacity uh, map here so we're just going to change this back to a proper color that um, the opacity map is going to read better here okay we'll drag up the uh, to the black here and we're just going to kind of see what we got here okay you can see now it's a lot shorter so this is gonna 
were quite nice. Okay, let's hit render again. And now we start to see uh, this is looking quite nice. Okay, it's going to make this maybe a little bit more gray in the middle here. Let's render that again. Okay, so right now, so just move that. Everything kind of went a little off on me here. But before I do that, I'm just going to take the, before I re-render this, I'm going to get the material of the uh, wick going here. We're just going to use like a kind of a grayish color. Okay, and um, maybe a little bit more of a charcoal gray dark. I don't want it fully black. There we go. You see that's starting to look pretty nice. Okay, I'm just going to call this a flame. And everything's looking quite nice here. Okay. Just going to let that render out a little bit here. And uh, you can see that uh, we're getting, we're very close to uh, getting a realistic uh, flame. And the, even the uh, with the wax and everything and that extra light that we added in the, uh, the top part of the candle here, that's really kind of showing through. And you can really see the uh, subsurface scattering uh, working out real nice right now with that light being inside there. So this is uh, giving a nice warmth. Um, feel to the candles. It's really nice. It's uh, turning out quite nice. And the ivory materials are really working well with this. It's really good. Okay. Alright, so I'm just trying a couple little extra techniques here just to kind of see what I can do with the uh, with the glow inside here. But I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with this. I'm going to rotate this around to see what it looks like on that side with the light hitting it a little bit more. But as you can see as I turn, we get to that darker spot on the left. It really, you can see the glow coming through. So this is looking really nice. I'm very happy with these results. Um, and uh, we can start to apply uh, the flame to all the other um, candles. You know, I also think it's maybe best to uh, to create one candle, fully uh, add the materials to it, and the uh, flame and then uh, and the light as well inside and then copy them over to the plate um, so that will speed up your your um, workflow as to uh, putting all the candles in together with the materials added already together because what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting the flames on all the uh, candles that I added earlier and also those light the light the, that's inside that lights the, uh, the candle with the subsurface scattering so all that has to be applied to my uh, modeling that I did earlier so not a big deal but uh, anyways let's just uh, go back to uh, what we're doing here is we're creating a noise just a little bit of noise to the uh, to the wax okay we just want to kind of break up the surface a bit so I'm going to use a fractal a size about a 0.02 I don't know just to kind of give it some um, a little bit of a surface here okay so I don't know if you're gonna really notice that here but um, you can see everything is looking quite nice you don't really have to add a noise if you don't want to um, that's pretty much an optional uh, an optional look but uh, anyways um, we're gonna go through this video here and I'm gonna show you some of the candles that have been added or the uh, flames have been added to the candles and also some of the uh, the light that's inside and as you've seen there uh, we had a quite a bit of good look with just a few of them uh, already lit so they're looking quite nice so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take all the um, the flames I'm gonna kinda start adding to the wicks here and I'm gonna scale them down a little bit the flame and make them different sizes and variations because um, that we don't want them all to be the same height. Uh, you know, some of the candles might be a little bit lower. Uh, it doesn't have that much momentum as the um, as they're lit. So we just want to kind of uh, change that around. So I'm going to go across these whole 
all these candles and start just moving these um, these lights around and also changing the wicks and um, not the wicks but the uh, but the uh, flames themselves to make a little bit more variation but as you can see I'm just doing some rotation uh, and scaling and um, that's gonna give us some uh, some random look to uh, some of these candles so it's not all the same all right so let's uh, let's go to that video here we go all right look at that that's how fast it happens let's just make sure I readjust that's why I'm just saying if you want to create the candle uh, create the can one candle um, with the materials and then um, so if you haven't uh, if you haven't uh, modeled the uh, candle yet then you're in a good spot but uh, I'm gonna actually say that in the beginning of this uh, video as well so just to give you guys a heads up instead of just doing what I'm doing here and putting them all in the candles that I've created earlier without the materials and stuff so all right let's get a render here and let's just see um, what we have as you see each of these are looking quite nice uh, we got a nice glow to them um, and we just got a the subsurface is working nice um, and it looks hopefully it looks quite wax kind of uh, material there and everything's um, looking correct or the best I can kind of get it right now I'm pretty happy with these, these results it's gonna bring up a little bit of the uh, of the reflective coating I just want to get a little bit of shine but what I'm gonna do is in post I'm gonna create a reflective map that goes over or past that goes over the candles that we can dull up a bit in uh, Photoshop to give us a little bit more of a, a shinier surface all right so a little bit of blending and that should help with that all right so what we're gonna do is select all the rocks okay I just went into our uh, our list here and it's like all the rocks make sure I got them all we're gonna group them we're gonna call them rocks or little pebbles we're gonna create a material for these guys we're just gonna make them kind of like a black um, something like a charcoal gray or black that just kind of uh, will give us some nice contrast towards the candles okay so base layer I can bring that uh, up a little bit and I'm just going to do some adjustments before I, I do our uh, active shade. Okay, give it some shine. All right, we're going to do uh, a little bit of bump map here. We're going to do fractal, and we're just going to come in over size 0 0.05. We're just going to get some, uh, just a little bit of bump there. So we're going to say. I'm going to change that to 4. I don't know why I did that, but uh, the bump map is actually on our other uh, tab. Okay, on our. Let's render this out again. Okay, roughness at one. So what I'm going to try to do is just get a nice gloss look here to the uh, to the rocks. So let's just kind of see what we can manage to get here. Okay, I like that kind of tone. Okay, now we got a little bit of shine there. That's good. It's going to bring this back up a little bit. Okay, I'm starting to like that. It's looking quite nice. Okay, because it just had to move a little bit of our glossiness up. And then we can bring our reflective coating back up, our I or R. And let's make this a little bit darker. So if we bring up our glossiness in that way in the color towards more black, we lose our our, uh, our gloss 
are um, specular, so we just kind of want to uh, be careful of that. I want it to be a little bit of shiny of rock, so maybe I'll play the roughness a bit. That's not too bad. So you point two. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we're also going to look at this side here, and I'm going to start to add another material here where I'm going to create the plate. So the plate, we can uh, spell that right. <laughs> we'll just drag this up, or drag this into the viewport, and it should onto the plate, and we should uh, have that applied. I'm going to make this white porcelain kind of look. All right, so you can see you already got a nice shine to it. Okay. Let's add some subsurface to this as well. We want some light, a little bit of light to cast through. We can also try the translucency, uh, and I don't think we're going to add any kind of effect to that. In fact, I think it darkened it as we're bringing the weight up, so we don't need that. Let's just go back down to volume, subsurface scattering, um, and uh, we can bring our absorption what to the white, and then. Um, uh, we can also change the uh, direction up to one, see if that changes anything. I don't think it does too much. Uh, distance uh, 500. Let's do 10 centimeters. Well, it should be pretty good. Okay, now that we've created all our materials and we've put it on the plate and we've also done our candles, we've also sorted out all our lights that are in the candle and flames. Um, and, and also the uh, pebbles, we can now uh, start to look at our scene and color. So right now uh, we've added our lights here. We have one on the left side here, and that's we gave it the nice blue filter. And then on this side here, we have our warmer light that's going to uh, be casting over here as well. We have also our environment lighting, okay, as well. And that's going to be our total light setup. So that's three lights total. Um, that is going to light the environment side that we have all these lights here in the uh, candle as well. So we're going to go to our camera and actually uh, I'm going to show you the setup of the camera as well. Uh, right now I'm using a 50 millimeter lens um, and as we come down we have our depth of field. We're going to check that on in just a moment uh, and we'll get into all those properties but for now we're just going to take a look at what we have so far for our, uh, for our frame. So let's just hit render and let's take a look at what we have. All right, so as you can see, our warm light is uh, casting nicely and we got our blue light and uh, we got our flames and all the, um, the wax is coming in. So this is going to take a little time to, uh, to load up. I only have one of the GPUs running right now. Uh, but this is just enough to, uh, so that I can see uh, what I'm working with here. And what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to open up the material editor and we're going to start to darken the room. Uh, what I've done was I've set up a wall material here and it's an iRay material. Okay, and uh, going through the properties here, just to speed this uh, tutorial up a bit more here because I'm running out of time. But as you can see here, I have a base layer. I just select a nice uh, dark uh, gray color here. Nothing. I, don't, I never went uh, fully uh, in the black here, but I've uh, got pretty close to it. So that will give me a little bit of nice uh, darkness around the room. Um, and then the glossiness, I don't have anything really going on there. It's very, very straightforward base material. There's not really much to it. It's just a color that I want to get in the back, uh, in the backdrop here, just so that I can start to darken the room. So let's drag this guy over, and uh, you can use any color that you, you wish. You know, be creative and uh, find what works for you. Um, but this will really change the, uh, the environment quite a bit just by adding that. So we'll just let this, uh, this render through here. Okay, so now that we've applied the black material, you can see that uh, we've, it has darkened the room quite a bit. Um, that's going to give us a nice kind of uh, glow for the candles and 
we just didn't want to really make it like it's a daytime scene you know we got a, maybe a little bit of it going on here with that light in the back we're just kind of faking a, uh, some of the, uh, the light hits from the uh, from the left side of the, with the blue uh, filter but um, that's gonna help us uh, with a nice glow okay so when we do some post work it's gonna really stand out and that's where you're gonna see that nice orange and warmth to the image okay so our next um, material we're gonna add is the uh, table and we're gonna use uh, I have it here the table one here actually I didn't call it table and I should have all right make sure you name your material so you know what you're grabbing oops that's right there we go okay so <laughs> we're gonna go with table here and then what we're gonna do is uh, and what I'm gonna show you here is we pretty much we have our diffuse uh, map that I'm using okay you can pick whatever uh, image you like all right so I'm just using this rustic floor uh, texture all right and this is gonna be nice kind of for the look that I want uh, we applied it to the diffuse uh, slot and then down in the glossy slot as well we just copy that over and drag it here okay so you just grab this and you can copy it there uh, from there we also copied it into our roughness and we uh, put it to um, 0.15 so that's going to give us just a little bit of a breakup in the reflection uh, so let's just drag it in and let's take a look again this is another material that's not too uh, because it's going to be a lot out of focus it's only going to be in focus here in this in, in this area down below the uh, the frame in the, in the far uh, r bottom right um, we just need a little bit of a bumpiness on the surface so I'll, uh, I'll go through those properties in a minute here all right so let's just let this load up and then uh, let's have a look at what our table will look like Okay, so as you can see, we have applied the material. It's uh, went on nicely, and you can see that there's not really too much going on here with the um, with the uh, the gloss. Um, so I just uh, I just really wanted to bring it quite low to uh, 0.15, and it, just to give it maybe a little bit of highlights down here. You can see them kind of picking up here, and when we get the um, the depth of field going, it's going to go out of focus and nice. We're going to get a little bit of bokeh there, and it's just going to these little hits of uh, light are going to kind of give us that nice little effect, the bokeh effect that we're looking for as like a macro photo. Um, so pretty much after that we're just got to go to the reflective coating and uh, this is where I've applied actually the same texture over the bump map. Now you can make a grayscale if you like. Uh, for this kind of image this is fine for, for what I'm using uh, for this angle that I'm using because um, we're not going to be really seeing too much of the bump map there. This is going to be all again out of focus so I'm not really focusing too much on the bump map but I just wanted to apply a little bit and give it some surface and I think that would work quite nice alright so that's pretty much it as it goes for the material there's not really much more um, and you have your your weight is as is, is, uh, is 100% and I left the uh, Fresno curve at 1.5 so I didn't really do too much there so just simple simple materials at this point just to get us a nice uh, just kinda of really focusing on those candles and everything else is just backdrop so all right, let's get on to the camera and let's make this thing all come together by um, using the depth of field, okay? So we go to our camera properties here and I'm just gonna, see, whoop, before I, I'm just gonna cancel that for a minute. We're gonna use our depth of field and get our final render uh, ready to go here. So as we got our camera here, we can see where pretty much our focus is we're kind of focusing down on these front candles here okay um, so if we come down to depth of field I used uh, the f-stop 4 and then we're going to enable our multi-pass effect we're going to come over where it says depth of field mental ray we're going to check that and then you can pretty much move your target distance where you like to focus on your candles for this I just picked kind of near the front kind of just or actually it's just hitting these guys just a bit if you want to like bring it up a little bit more to maybe get more towards the middle go for it that is up to you but um, this will work for now and as you can see as I hit uh, this gets really crazy and I don't think um, this is totally correct on our scale of the uh, of the depth of field but four seems to work 
uh, at this scene scale. So let's um, let's just hit render and let's take a look. All right, so now that we have applied the depth of field, we now can see that uh, we get a really cool, realistic uh, look here. As you can see, uh, we're going out of focus here, and it comes in into focus quite tight. So you can see that there's you can almost see the blur line right here, that it starts here and ends out down here, and it also in the front part of the camera you can see where it starts and then ends. So we're pretty much focusing in between this can these two candles, and then coming out through here through um, this candle here, the, uh, the middle one. Uh, and this is going to work for me and um, we can now start to set up our final render. Okay, right now this is the um, this is the active shape. So there's one key thing that the active shade doesn't have that actually the, pr the production uh, part of, the, of iRay does have. So we're going to have to get into those properties. I'll show you that and then we'll set up our uh, final um, our final renders and I'll also show you a little uh, nice little pass that we can add to uh, to these candles in post to get a little bit more highlights to the, to our candles. They don't look so dull as they do right now. All right, so let's go into the properties of our um, of our final. Okay, I'm just going to uh, exit out of the active shade window here. Okay, we're going to go to render setup, and we're going to come into production render mode. And as you can see, we're already at on uh, the render eye ray. As we come down to render, we're going to use unlimited for now, or you can set up your own time. So you can use unlimited right now. I'm just going to choose when I when I want to uh, stop the render. And uh, our solver method, what we're going to do here, because we're using subsurface scattering, I want to use the architectural sampler, which, as you can see right now, uh, light which passes through translucent or glossy surfaces light which is reflected on specular uh, specular or glossy surfaces subsurface scattering interior scenes okay so this is what we want to be on and I believe that the um, the active shade doesn't uh, doesn't show that so this is going to really help kind of cast light a little bit more through our scene it's going to bounce light a little bit differently uh, and it's going to really help us there I'm also going to make sure that we're on a, yeah, physically correct unlimited uh, at the trace and bounce limits we're also going to look at image filtering, and we see the type is triangle. Okay, we're going to stick with that. And I'm pretty much uh, set to go. It's got to make sure that um, we're not going to use any displacement in this, so that's good. Uh, as we come through here, we got our hardware resources. I'm going to check on everybody. I'm going to use full guns of my um, CPU, and uh, we're going to blast away. And let's render a final out of this and, uh, and see what happens. Okay, so I hit render. And we're also uh, rendering at 720, I believe. Uh, 1280 by 720, that's what I'm going to render this at. Oh, at. All right, let's pause the video and return with our final image. Okay, so after we've waited for pretty much a half hour, um, uh, this, is the, uh, this is what I've gotten as a result. Um, so I just wanted to go right to our image here and this is pretty much what the end result turned out to be after we would hit the render button so as you can see we have um, our depth of field working quite nicely here keep uh, here let's just go over okay and you can see over here we got some nice bokeh effect you can see where our bump map is here in the bottom uh, right and that's working quite nice you can see our stone so everything's a little bit gray right now but we're going to be able to uh, change that in post and you know maybe add some color grade to it to uh, give it a little bit more flair but other than that this is a very nice render this is exactly kind of what i plan to to have as as a um as a as the model and uh as them sitting there uh, inside a room i just thought of it being like on a table or something like that in like a kind of a cozy maybe apartment or something like that so this is uh, the final look, and also what I've done was I created myself just a very reflective uh, uh, material that was kind of like almost like a chrome, but it had a little bit of uh, black to it that just gives us darkened it a little bit around the uh, candles. I didn't even really let it render too much. I just needed a little bit. Uh, you can let this render so that a little bit more just to get rid of some of these uh, the fireflies. 
uh, but also you can get them removed you can have them removed through iRay itself but uh, this is all I needed to give me a little bit more highlight and a little extra flair to my render as in post so I'm gonna show you how I put this together and then we're gonna conclude this video and get everything all wrapped up uh, and you can go on your way of creating your own candle scenes okay so um, let's uh, see you guys in Photoshop where we're gonna put all everything together here all right so now that we're in Photoshop we can now begin to uh, give our, um, our render a little bit more uh, punch to it so we can start by adding our reflection map and I've pretty much sorted everything out I've done everything in advanced but you can follow along quite well and uh, get your own results with this but this is kind of a technique that I have just kind of went over with um, or just to show you guys that what I've done and it's really helped me with the render as well to get it to where it is now so we're gonna take our reflection map and I'm gonna bring this up and right now I have it on soft light and as I turn it on that's reflection maps gonna go above our our main shot and actually um, I just call this uh, main okay so that's our main render right and once we add our reflection pass on you can see the huge difference and what I've done here was I went over into our uh, if we go to our normal properties here and we come down where it says 50 I'm gonna put this back to uh, 100 okay you can see that we have our uh, reflection pass here now what I've done that looks a little different here is I blurred it I added some blur to the image by going over to the blur and the Gaussian blur and I just kind of got a little bit of a more softer reflections and that's what's gonna that's why I didn't really worry about the um, the fireflies and all that I just kind of wanted to keep this uh, nice and soft I just needed to, just a slight bit of uh, reflection here so if I went to 50% you can start to see that uh, this is going to work quite nice. But as soon as I add our uh, blend, I went back into soft light. Now you can see we just get little hits of light here. It looks very soft and elegant. And that's what I was looking for with the reflection pass. Okay? It just really helped me uh, kind of sell the, uh, the highlights and the reflections just a bit more. All right. And the next part here is the hue and saturation. I wanted to add a little bit more hue to our scene so I got a little bit more uh, warmth to it I added some orange and um, really uh, if you can see here the saturation I actually pretty much just brought this up at 20 okay and then um, uh, plus 20 and that just kind of gave me a little bit more uh, color to the scene okay so I'll go back to uh, 20 or plus 20 so well, that's pretty much it bring that back okay and we also added a curve so the curve uh, just helped us a little bit more giving us a little bit more punch up here all right and you can change um, the values that you want I just kind of played with this until I got something that I, I liked all right just help out with giving us a little bit more punch nothing to that and then we add a little bit more exposure okay that just gave us a um, I added a uh, 0.22 on the exposure, right? So, and then, um, and I think I did both 0.96 here. But yeah, change that a bit. That's okay. And that's good. The exposure uh, will really help them just a little bit lighten up the scene. And then, last but not least, we have our environment light, and this kind of give us some cast. And how I've create the uh, environment lighting is uh, using the gradient tool, and I can create my own kind of. Um, light so I just use a white light and I have it transparent on the other end of our gradient editor so what I do is just drag out and you can see because I'm on an opacity of 12 if I bring this ray up you can see where I was casting these lights so I was just dragging them into the corners just like this and um, that was helping with uh, kind of giving us a little bit of bloom and just a little bit more environment feel so that's pretty much it that's really all that is done with this and um, and then it just all came together so all right guys that concludes this video tutorial thank you for watching I hope you've learned a lot and you can go and create your own candle scenes inside of iRay and 3d studio max uh, if you liked what you've seen and you want to see more video tutorials subscribe to my channel and also if you have any questions about what you've seen today please feel free to post a comment below and I'll be glad to help you as much as I can. 
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again in another RenderSpaz video tutorial. Thanks.